This video will give a high level overview of the new product features in Cap Server EX version 514. This version includes larger packet sizes for faster device communication and one of our most popular drivers, Allen Bradley Control Logics Ethernet. You can see from the screenshot here of the device property wizards that you can configure larger packet sizes up to 4,000 bytes. That's up from the previous 500. So that's for firmware release 20 and higher and newer Ethernet modules in those controllers. And we've demonstrated with some testing we've done here that in some cases, communication speeds can be over 100% faster when leveraging the version 514 higher packet sizes. So you can definitely tune your application for higher throughput. Major functionality has been added to the data logger plugin, which is used to connect to databases. Data logger now performs store and forward. Also in this release, a new Siemens device model has been introduced. The S7-1500 is now supported in the Siemens TCP IP Ethernet drive. The Siemens TCP IP Ethernet driver also now supports automatic tag generation direct from a step 7 project file, as well as we now support in our electronic flow measurement offering, liquid measurement. Let's explore the data logger store and forward first. So many of you are familiar with our data logger plugin. You can store data off to ODBC compliant databases like SQL Server or MS Access save environmental data for auditing, make historical comparisons, or save data for analysis. Now, use case here is maybe your food and beverage or pharmaceutical or another type of company. You might be subject to rigorous audits to avoid things like tainted food or medication because human health and well-being is at stake. So in order to meet these standards, you might use a database to record and track information about the batches of food and drugs that you're producing. So a device or a PLC on your production line is going to totalize this batch data and then maybe map that to a database using an application like CapServer EX. Now, if that line of communication between CapServer EX and the database is lost, you might get some data gaps. And connectivity could be lost if simply a switch fails or the SQL Server becomes so busy that a write request times out. With such tight auditing and quality standards, simple loss of communications result in maybe the product being discarded or heavy fines. Worst case scenario, you don't catch something before it leaves the warehouse and it might harm your consumers. So the question here is how much data loss can you tolerate? If it's just for a couple minutes or maybe into the hour range. So store and forward helps you in that situation in that we will buffer that data locally on the server while the connection is lost. And then once that connection is restored, we send it to the database, along with any new data that's coming through. Okay, so we're gonna get into the data logger plugin here. You see that I'm gonna click to add a new log group and check enabled for store and forward functionality. Couple simple settings that go here. Where you're going to store the file, by default, it's stored in the C program data folder and then the maximum size in megabytes for that file. That can go up to 2048. Now let's explore automatic tag generation for Siemens devices. When first setting up CapServer X Siemens devices, users must tell the server where to get data by entering the register address of the items that they want to pull. These items we call tags in the server. And previous to version 514, you needed to enter them manually. This can be tedious and error prone, and really engineers should have a way to more efficiently and accurately load those items. So now with automatic tag generation, the server can pull items from step seven project files. They can get shared symbol and data block data from those files and populate a tag item list in the server. So let's see what this looks like in action. First, I have a Siemens channel and device already created on the server. You see I'm using the Siemens TCP IP Ethernet driver. If I get into device properties, you see I'm using the S7300 model. Now you must use the 300 or 400 models. We do not currently support 200, 1200, or 1500 models 
for automatic tag generation because they use the TIA portal for configuration and not step 7. So I again am going to select a 300 model. In the tag import dialog, it's a new tab here for device properties. I can select my S7P file from my project hierarchy. And you see here that on my desktop, I have my step 7 project files. And I have the full project file hierarchy on my desktop. And it's important that that S7P file is located where that full project hierarchy is. You can't just use the S7P file, it must reference the entire project hierarchy. So I browse for that S7P file and really that's just a pointer or beacon to where that project hierarchy for your Step 7 project exists. So I select that file and then as soon as I do that, the program path list there is going to be populated with all the station CPUs I have set up in my project, in my Step 7 project. So those were everything in that project file I had programmed. And I'm just going to go ahead and select the first program 301. And then if I go into my database creation tab, I can now click the auto create button. And what that will do, ping that step seven project file and generate tags from shared samples and data blocks. So in my root device level here, I see all the shared symbols that I had configured in that project. And then if I had a data block, they're given a tag folder we do support nested data blocks. And then if I had any unnamed data blocks in my project file, those are populated with their numeric that they were given at time of creation. Now on to our liquid support for electronic flow measurement. This would be in the oil and gas space. So you're an oil and gas company and you might already be mining natural gas. You learn about a exciting new opportunity arising in the area of something called natural gas liquids or NGLs, maybe in the western US and shale oil field. So your company needs a way to separate and refine those NGLs to make the fuel suitable to sell to other companies and businesses. So how do you do that? You might use a local fractionator to do this job. So local to the mining site, use a fractionator to separate these NGLs. Now, like most oil and gas companies on the market, the amount of money you're making is highly dependent on the accuracy and reliability of the measurements you're making of the fuel coming out of that fractionation facility. So you're interested in things like purity and volume because that directly correlates to your bottom line. As an oil and gas producer, you might have already been using measurement applications like flow grout and PGAS to measure uh, natural gas moving through a pipeline. So now you want to use that same application to measure these natural gas liquids. To get those more accurate measurements, how do you get the data from those remote meters on those fr in those fractionation facilities? Well, you might use software like Kepsa Reex to communicate with those field devices and export the information for analysis. To support the measurement of these high value NGLs, Kepler has added liquid measurement support to our EFM exporter for FlowCal export format, as well as new device models for our Fisher Rock Plus, as well as our Omni Flow computer drivers. Let's demo this. Now on my server, I already have an Omni device created. And I'm gonna go ahead and go through the creation of a Fisher Rock Plus channel and device for you. So I select the Fisher Rock Plus driver and then just leave all the defaults for everything else in the channel level. Our defaults are meant to get you started right off the bat first time through. I'm going to click to add a device and here you can see that we have the new 809L and 827L models to support those liquid measurements. Again, click through all the defaults on most of these settings. And once I get to my EFM meters tab, I see that I have a new liquid turbine option. And I can add a meter, specify meter name, click OK, and then go ahead and add as many meters as I want, up to six per flow computer. Finish, 
And that's it for configuring Fisher Rock connectivity. If I go and I look at my OmniFlow channel and device that I have already created, you see that in device properties, I've selected Omni Liquid Firmware, so we do support gas and liquid now. And if I go into my EFM mapping tab, I can see that I can configure my mapping to get out of the controller the history data, batch data, and go to those locations where that data is stored on the OmniFlow computer. And then I can import and export that mapping in order to make configuration easier for me if I'm doing multiple devices. Now, last thing, I also have an EFM simulator configured here. We do offer an EFM simulator to simulate meter data. So I'm going to go ahead and generate some test data to test out our new EFM exporter functionality with. Now, in the EFM exporter plugin, this was introduced in version 5.9, so you can reference those uh, how-tos and videos to see originally how that was set up. And I'm just going to show you here how it was changed to accommodate liquid measurement. So if I add a poll group, I'm going to do on-demand polling only. And I see right off the bat, I now have a gas meter fol folder and a liquid meter folder. Now, in liquid meters, this is where I'm going to add those EFM simulator meters that I created on the server level. And I can pull these liquid meters and any gas meters I have at the same time. Of course, I can add any other meters from any other flow computers I have configured on the server, so I could add Fisher Rock or Omni devices to this pull group if I wanted. Right now, we're just going to stick with the simulation devices. I go to my export, I see we only support the FlowCal CFX format for now. So I'm going to add a new FlowCal exporter. And I can select my history type. We do support the 11, 12, 13 types for liquid. You can choose hourly or daily. Specify the file path where I want those exported files to be stored. And then use wire cards to specify how those files will be separated. So if I launch my quick client, I can select the EFM exporter poll group here and I have a dot poll tag and I'm going to write a one to that to do my on-demand polling. Again, this was explained in earlier videos. So I write a one to that value, click apply. You can see my underscore polling tag goes high to indicate I'm pulling data for that device. And then I get those exporter files on my desktop created once the polling has completed. So I have one file per simulated meter that I configured. Now I have uh, this application called Show CFX that I can use to open up these files and see the simulated data that I created. And that's all the liquid data that you could get out using our EFM exporter. Well, thank you so much for watching this video today. Of course, you can always contact us. Training, sales, technical support, it's all available through Kepware. And as always, download our free demo software online.